Rob from Expedition Team Overland here with your 2020 holiday buying guide. So what I've done is I've put together a list of what I think is the top uh, 10, actually it's 11, top 11 uh, Christmas gifts, holiday gifts that you can get that are roughly under $200. For someone who's in the uh, into overlanding, off-roading, jeeping, in your in, for you or your family, so uh, we'll go through the whole list uh, one by one. Then I'll kind of go into a little more deep description. So number one, and these are this is in no order, and I'm also not uh, sponsored or got any of this stuff for free. This is all stuff that I've personally used, uh, stuff my friends are using, and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, no sponsors, no, not, I'm not getting anything for free, no kickbacks from them or anything. So. Uh, camp stove, spare tire uh, trash receptacle system of some sort, shovels, first aid kit, tire pressure gauge, tire repair kit, tire deflators, air compressors, high lift jack, recovery boards, and lanterns. So like I said, there's no order to this, Not it's not, uh, you know, Worst of worst the best or whatnot. So um, some of these are going to be uh, loaded questions. There's a little bit more of a way to find what you want, or uh, there's a lot a lot of options out there on uh, on Amazon or at Northridge, OK Four Wheel Drive, uh, Quadratech. There's a lot of different options out there. So uh, first one is going to be camp stoves. A whole bunch of them out there. Everything from you know thousand dollar systems that built into trailers. And your uh, or into your goose gear systems and whatnot to simple like I have is the Camp Chef and the Coleman. Camp Chef and Coleman are, are uh, more of the entry level, I believe. They last forever. Uh, they're they're very fairly inexpensive, about 150 to to 90 dollars. I think I saw one of the Coleman's was like 70 dollars. They all use the one pound propane tanks. I think those are great. They they get the job done. I I'm I'm only going camping a couple times a year. Uh, so I'm not using it every day, uh, so it's it's you know it's more on the budget friendly side. Uh, next I have is a spare tire trash receptacle. Two ones that come to mind for me are Trash Roo and then Blue Ridge Overland gear. Both of them attach to the spare tire. Uh, if you're in bear country, I can detach it, hang it from a tree, but most importantly, it keeps the trash and smells out of my vehicle. Uh, I put a big bear, I put a big uh, trash kit bag inside of it, one of the big thick uh, garage trash bags, put that on the inside so if there's any leaking and stuff like that, plus then it's easier to grab one thing out and throw it in the dumpster. Uh, next is shovels. This is a, there is so many different options on this. You can go to your local hardware store and just get a basic spade shovel, mount it up to your rack or put it in your vehicle to the, the tri-fold army shovel that goes in a little pouch to uh, the Crazy Beaver, which is like $200, and, but it's got uh, serrated edges, so when, you're, when you dig into the ground, it, you can get through roots or break up a tree. Some of them have saws on them. So uh, I don't think you go wrong with any of them. They all work. I have the uh, just a basic spade shovel in the back of my Jeep, but with my AEV tire carrier, it just slides into the back and has a little mount for it. That's what I do. I think I also have in my recovery gear, I have an army shovel. So if two of us need to work on something or whatever, uh, it all works out. Next is first aid kit. This is, to me, you're only as good as the most important piece of recovery for recovery gear, first aid, off-roading, all that type of stuff. The most important thing that you have is right here is your brain. You could have everything that's in a, in a fire truck EMS kit, but if you don't know how to use 90% of it, it's taking up space and useless weight. Uh, so you don't need, if you don't know how to use a defibrillator, don't get a defibrillator. If you don't know how to use a tourniquet, don't get a tourniquet unless you know how to properly use this equipment. So you can go out and buy an EMS uh, rated first aid kit for $500 or whatnot. But if you don't know how to use a stethoscope and listen to a proper listen to a heart, why are you carrying a stethoscope? So use what you know. For the average person out there, I think of just a basic first aid kit that you can have. I personally have made all my first aid kits. I've gone to Walgreens and Walmart and uh, CVS and bought you know gauzes and bandages and stuff like that, uh, creams, 
for burns and whatnot because that's stuff that I think I'm going to use. What am I going to see on the trail? Blisters from using an axe, a burn from a, uh, hopefully a, a small burn from a fire or touching a, a hot pot, cuts and scrapes. I do have a tourniquet. I do know how to use it. Uh, but I don't carry a lot. I have two of them with me. Uh, one in one in the first aid kit and one on the side of the, the handle of the door of the jeep of the door. So you just have to use what you want. So any basic first aid kit is better than nothing because it's going to have your your uh, your basic bandages and whatnot. I also have a couple books in mind, uh, some first aid books. So if in case I need to reference something, I could reference it if I were in something even worse. Next we have is tire pressure gauges. Now this is everything from your local uh, gas station, that's just like your the little pen style, to uh, the a AEV or the ARB that take goes into the uh, valve stem and removes the valve stem and uh, checks the pressure and deflates them. To I have the Joe's Racing uh, air pressure gauge, which just you just hold it on there and boom, tells you the pressure, and, and then you can also deflate the air if I need to. One thing that I have found out is that a tire pressure gauge is only accurate at 50, is mostly accurate at 50% of its value. So if you have a 60, P, if its max value is 60 PSI, it's most accurate at 30 PSI. That's why I have the Joe's Racing. I run my tires at street pressure at uh, 28 PSI. So it's most accurate at that level. I don't need to get 120 PSI. Uh, air pressure gauge because I'm not running that. Your my my bikes, you know your your uh, road bikes and mountain bikes, those do run at a higher pressure, so you do need a pressure gauge for that. So for the average Jeep, I think a 60 psi gauge is good. Joe's Racing AEV ARB, those are really good ones, but also the the pencil style one works just as good. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit slower if you have to deflate and might not be as accurate, but it gets the job done. So there's a whole range of stuff. But for the holiday guide, I'd say either Joe's Racing, AEV, or ARV. That's just my, like I said, these are just my opinions. It's what my friends and I use when we're on the trail. Uh, next is a tire repair kit. This is also goes into the same philosophy of the first aid kit. If you don't know how to use it, it's useless equipment and useless weight. But there is a lot of tire repair kits on the market. I just You can search Amazon, and then I'll put a couple in the link description. ARB one, uh, from what I've been told, is one of the better ones because the tools are just uh, ergonomically a little bit more handy and they're a little bit well built. The other ones that you buy at a truck stop or whatnot are going to get the job done, but they might break and whatnot after a couple of uses. Hopefully, you don't ever have to use it, but it's a good, like I said, it's a good piece of equipment to have in your in your vehicle. Next is air compressors. This is a loaded question because you can go all the way to um, power tank with CO2 onboard air to what I have is the ARB dual air compressor that, that's mounted in the vehicle, permanently mounted in the vehicle. Or you go with the Smitty Built or the Viairs that are portable. You could, and, and they all range from $100 to $500. There's, you know, it's a very, very big market out there. But the only thing I'm going to recommend is you do not buy one that plugs into the cigarette lighter. For, especially for oversized tires. If you're using uh, those, you're gonna burn out the air compressor because it just does not have enough power to, to air up five large, four, four large tires. Uh, so get anything you want. I'm gonna have a link in the description below is the Overland Journal Expedition Portal uh, air compressor review. I think they have a fantastic review because it takes everything from the little red compressor, which I actually had for, for four or five years. Worked well, just took a long time. Now I have the ARB, ranges everything from what they do. I actually think that they recommend the little red compressor because you can buy like 15 of them for the price of one um, of the ARB dual compressors. So, um, but it, you have to find what you want to work and what your budget is. If you don't have a large budget for the for a CO2 tank plus having to get it refilled or you don't want the dual ARB because it's permanently mounted into your vehicle, then get one of the smaller portable ones. So just find what works best for you. Next is high lift jack or a farm jack. I've had one since I started off-roading, never used it. It can be very dangerous if it's not used properly, but it's a nice jack because the, ball, the average jack that's in the back of your vehicle 
works great for stock tires or stock suspension, but once you put bigger tires and bigger suspension, it's not going to work. So this will actually get, I, with, the, with my high lift, it's, I think it's a 48 inch high lift, I'm able to get the Jeep 48 inches, the bumper 48 inches off the ground. Um, granted, it's already starting about you know 18 inches off the ground, but I can go up to 48 uh, to get a little bit, to, to change a tire to get underneath of it. Uh, you can also, so there's a whole bunch of them. A, high lift is the, is, the, is the name brand. There's a bunch of off name brands. I think Tractor Supply has a couple and you get some of them on Amazon. But is it an important uh, item to get? I don't think so. Uh, since it can be dangerous, but it does get you to change a tire on the spit on the trail. Next is recovery boards. So the main names in this are ARB and um, Max Tracks. Probably some of the more expensive ones, um, but that's you, you, you're going to get what you pay for. You can get on Amazon. You can buy the cheap ones. If you're just going out in the sand for you know the Outer Banks and they, and they require you to have them, you can, you you don't have to spend three hundred dollars for our Max Tracks or the ARBs. You can go on Amazon and get get the lower, cheaper ones that you want. It's just whatever you want. But ARB and a, and Max Tracks are the two name brands. But like I said, there's a whole ton of them on Amazon. Next is tire deflators. Now I use the Ston Australian brand. They work great. They're a brass deflator that spin on the tire, and I have them set to. A, you can preset them to a certain psi, and when the tire gets that psi, a little valve comes up and stops air from uh, coming out. They work great. You can use your def tire deflator, the ARV, the AEV, and the ARB tire def, uh, tire pressure gauge, and it's a deflator as well, because it goes in, pulls the valve stem out, and you can pull the air out. So there's a whole bunch of these that you can get. I have the Ston ones. I think they work good, and that's what I like. But there's also Smitty Build has this, has brass ones, and there's a whole bunch of other ones out there. Next and last is lanterns. This is once again a loaded question because there's a ton of them out there. You can go as far expensive as Claymore. I think those are like two or three hundred dollars for a couple of them. To Coleman that take four D batteries, and it's you know twenty bucks or something like that. Depends on what you want to do. If you want to have gas, there's gas ones. I actually I have the uh, Coleman uh, gas that uses the one pound propane tank, same as I have for my uh, stove. It works great. I'm old school. I like that lantern look, but there's more to it. So if you have the, if you already have a, a, a gas lantern, you can keep it. It'll last forever, um, or you just go with the LEDs and carry some extra batteries with you. So. Um, Find what works best for you or find what works best for your budget. And remember, you just don't have to buy the name brand to look cool. So, uh, but anyway, this is the 2020 holiday buying guide. And I hope I can help you out, you and your family out with finding you the best gift for your, uh, for the Overland community. If you guys have any other comments, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear some ideas on what, uh, what else you guys would recommend. And I'll do this again for next year. So have a good one.